Cleveland gets a stud point guard and some help, including a draft pick. And obviously Boston gets, you know, if he's not the best point guard, he's certainly in the top two or three. If he's healthy. Um, yeah. So, man. I don't, know, I, don't know how, I don't know what situation. you guys. I don't know what you guys think about it, but this. When I woke up this, I don't know what time you guys saw it. Well, I was in the evening yesterday. I'm sure it happened. I'm sure I was snoozing, but did you go to bed about seven? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was eight o'clock. It was. It, it was something like that. It happened that. relatively it was, late. Yeah, it had to be after eight because I was up at eight. Yeah, it, it was around that time. I don't know. I was up late. This is just a massive deal, and um, I'm not sure what the listeners feel about it, but and or how it affects the Wizards at all. Well, it just made, it keeps just a, both teams super competitive. Yeah, you know, and it really sets the Celtics up. Now, I think so there's for a years couple. To come. There's a couple factors here. I mean, Kyrie's got three years left, for sixty million bucks, but he can opt out after two. But um, he's already indicated that he wants to stay there long term. I'm sure he would. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a premier ball, you know basketball city. Great coach Isaiah. Who knows what? This is a lot of unknowns. LeBron's an unknown. Isaiah's a free agent after this year. Isaiah's got a hip injury. They didn't have surgery on. Um, you know, you got the number one pick. Does that entice LeBron? Who knows? There's just a lot of unknowns. My here. immediate reaction is, a, it sets up and fits in perfectly with what Danny Ainge and and, and Brad Stevens are doing over there in Boston. It just sets them up. There's going to be a franchise to be reckoned with for the next five to seven years. Mm-hmm. And in Cleveland, it's it, it salvages sort of their point guard situation. I mean, okay, sure they lose Kyrie, one of the greatest in the league, but you know they replace him with Derrick Rose. All- and Isaiah Thomas, mm-hmm. and who knows how long LeBron's going to be there? May only be a run. That's fine. They, 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 it salvages another run for Cleveland. So it made a lot of sense for both teams. It really did. It's a great deal. I mean, Plus, you, you get feel possibly like... a top five, if not number yeah. one overall pick. Yeah. If the Nets are terrible. Yeah. Which, which they will you, be. Which you probably they think they would. Probably be. would be. But you know, you got Isaiah Thomas. Who now you're going to have to give Isaiah Thomas a boatload of money, right? And he said but, as much. He's like, got to back up the Brinks truck. I'm going to make. Going to my next. He's a little bit older, right? A little bit more banged up, but man, this deal on paper looks really good for both teams. Yeah, it looks great for both teams. And how does it affect the Wizards? That you know, just keeps kind of keeps them where they are. I yeah, think. yeah. Because they have really... to get through one of two heavyweights if they have any chance of making the NBA Finals. They have to yeah. knock off either the Celtics or the Cavs. But it's I mean, every, be a tall task. everyone assumed that it was going to be the Celtics and the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals. Again, and, you know, the Wizards tried to make, you know, a couple additions to make them better. You know, obviously John Wall resigns and um, or signs the extension. Um, you know, how do they feel? Do they feel like, hey, we're over here. We're not dead. Or do they feel like, all right, we're still number three in the well, Eastern I think, Conference? I think if you gave anybody in the front office truth serum that they would tell you that they're – clearly below the Cavs and the Celtics. Yeah. But they they would never admit that. They're there, but if something happens and somebody slips up a little bit, because, you know, <laughs> when you don't have LeBron or Steph Curry or KD or one of these guys, you're kind of waiting for somebody else to slip up or maybe right. get hurt, or, you know, and then you can jump in. Right, you have to bide your time. I mean, we have John and Brad and Otto, et cetera, but they're still not that level yet. So, yeah. And then, you know, you think about um, Boston and, you know, they gave up a lot. They did. They gave up their best player. Now, they added Gordon Hayward. But they the were reluctant to, to to give him the big deal that he's going to want. He's indicated he wants a yeah. max deal. He's so tiny. You know, they, yeah. they lost Crowder. Crowder's a good piece. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, he just is. He's good. He's a defender who can rebound, who can hit an open jumper. They lost Avery Bradley. In the offseason, defender who could shoot it. Um, but, you know, you're getting Kyrie. So I don't know how, how NBA fans feel about this. I just, when I read it and just kind of dissected it a little bit, I'm thinking, man, both teams got a really good deal. Yeah, I think maybe, it's great. Slightly, maybe Cleveland's slightly better of it. I, I just don't know. You could probably debate me on that one, but. It's I think a, in the short term, it just a, keeps them right where they are. It's a fitty fitty to me. I think it keeps them right where they are, provided that Isaiah is healthy. Now, again, if LeBron leaves. And goes to L.A. Well, the, gonna, the, I, Cav, the Cavs become the Brooklyn Nets then. Yeah, if that's yeah, the yeah. case. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's well, like they have the number push one the pick. reset button. Right. Yeah. yeah, they have the but, number one well, This is about one year for, for Cleveland. For Boston, it's more of a long-term play and an and a immediate play. I don't know. Drabby, what would you think? You're an NBA mark. First off, I just get so size for the NBA. You just don't <laughs> see this type of stuff happen in the other leagues. Mm-hmm. The other thing is this. If you're not winning championships in Boston, 
you're you're making blockbuster trades or signing massive free agents. It just must be so nice to see those teams and have something always going on. Mm -hmm. But as far as on the court, they could play a game and it's and I would think or a series and I think it would go down to game seven yep. in the second half. I think those teams are very very close together. But there's a lot of people I said that, uh, read that are worried about Thomas's hip. Yeah, like that it's not healing properly. Or, well, then he's been, they don't know that he'll be ready to start right. the season. Um, which yeah, I mean, is that's fine. a big deal. That is a big which deal. Which is fine. I mean, it presumably, let's just assume that it heals at some point and he's there, you know, by the All Star break or something. They'll be okay. But I, I, I think that if he is at the level that he was last year, right? I know that the hip's a big deal. It is. Big question mark. Mm -hmm. But if he's at that level, playing at that level, I don't think there's a chance Boston can beat Cleveland in the best of seven. They decided that he did not need surgery, right? Right. I think so. Yeah. He did not so have maybe, surgery. So maybe they'll decide it's not healing and he's going to have to dig in there and have a surgery, which I know you, you want to avoid at all costs, but maybe that'll... And that would be devastating be for them. 